Ladies and gentlemen, please grab a comfy seat on the couch. The show is about to begin. Wait, is that our Director of Alumni Relations, Joe Pirate? What's he doing at the Ivar? Um, okay. I don't think he knows that the show is completely virtual. <clears throat> All right, let me handle this. Can you hear me? Uh, Joe? Well, folks, let, let's see how this pans out. Hello, and welcome to the second annual Spotlight Awards Red Carpet Ceremony. I'm Joe Byron, Director of Alumni Relations, and tonight we'll be honoring six distinguished alumni who'll be inducted into the Los Angeles Film School's Spotlight Academy. We honor these graduates for their dedication, hard work, and achievements, yes, but also for their commitment to the school community, the students, the alumni, the faculty, and staff. Each of these started as Los Angeles Film School students. After all, grand dreams begin with passion, hard work, and creativity and our graduates never stop creating. Is it me or am I just talking to myself out here? Oh, Joe. Oz. Joe Byron, what's up? You on your way? I'm at the interview for the spotlight ceremony. Where are you? I'm at the Ivar Theater, where the, where the award show is happening. You're at the venue. Oh, did you not get the memo? Uh, the memo that says that the spotlight ceremony is virtual this year, Joe. <sighs> Joe, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, sounds good. Make sure your Wi-Fi connection is strong. We need it. Hi, Joe. I am so excited. Are you ready to co-host the 2020 Virtual Spotlight Awards? By the way, your green screen looks great. It really looks like the Ivar. Are you wearing a scuba mask? Yes, it is a mask. And no, you can't be too safe, can you? And no, I'm at the, I'm at the Ivar Theater. I'm the real Ivar Theater. You're physically there at, at the Ivar? Wait, what? Okay, okay, Joe. First, you, the campus is closed and you're you're not allowed to be there. Second, thank you for wearing a mask. I'm I'm assuming that's your definition of a mask. But third, I, I can't do this without you. Remember our banter for the opening? I'm still new. You're still old. I started at the school in 2019. You started sometime after the war. I'm still learning. You still know it all. I, I, I don't know how we're going to do this. Don't worry, Tammy. I won't let you down. Joe, our show is called From Our Home to Yours. How in the world are you going to get home in time? Mm. I will make this happen. The show must go on, right? 2020 can't get any crazier, can it? I'd like to kindly remind our hosts that we are currently broadcasting live. All right, uh, you better get going, Joe. Wait, before you do, let's kick the show off right now. Everyone, welcome to the 2020 Los Angeles Film School Virtual Spotlight Award Ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to formally introduce you to the Spotlight Academy Class of 2020. Damien Zybert, Animation Class of 2010. Enrique Andrade, Recording Arts Class of 2011. Jessica Sterling, Film Class of 2001. Martin Penza, Film Class of 2002. Oz Rodriguez, Film Class of 2003. Matt Valines, Film Class of 2003. Please welcome the President of the Los Angeles Film School, Tammy Elliott. Good evening, everyone. By the grace of all that is good, it is so wonderful to be here with you tonight. And thank you so much for sharing your evening with us. As you can tell from that introduction, we have a wonderful lineup of extraordinary talent to share and celebrate with you. Before we move our deserved attention to our honorees, I would like to consider our audience that is with us tonight from across the country and our planet. There's a really good chance that joining us tonight are frontline workers that are leaning into those in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. Through days and nights and weeks and months, and we thank you. Sincerely and deeply, we thank you. And for those of us that may have experienced the profound pain of illness and loss, we are carrying you with us tonight and always. Now, it's a tough turn to make from the realities of our day to day and move into an evening of celebration. But this night is worthwhile in recognizing our 2020 Spotlight Academy class and with joy and with pride. And can also be a night that creates a safe place to share, to laugh, to fondly remember back then and get a little closer to those we love. And speaking of love, please allow me to introduce you to someone that radiates love for all of our alumni. Our Director of Alumni Relations, Mr. Joe Byron. Joe, are you with me? Yes, Tammy, I'm with you and I'm on my way back home. But that isn't stopping me from honoring our amazing members of the next 2020 Spotlight Academy. I'm truly blessed to have been with the school for 21 years and I've had the opportunity to see so many of our grads pursue these rewarding careers. In those years, I've watched our school grow from 13 original students to over 10,000 graduates. It is so much fun for me to reach out and try to stay in touch with as many as I can. But that's enough about me. Let's say hello to our guests. Hello everyone, it's so great to see you and we are so excited to be joined by our Los Angeles Film School staff and faculty and friends in Winter Park, Florida. Thank you so much for joining us and the virtual party is just getting started. Now, although we might not be together in the same room, we can all feel your positive energy from all over the world. So keep those comments rolling in. And now, tonight, the Los Angeles Film School celebrates six exceptional alumni who made outstanding achievements and contributions to the entertainment industry, the school, and the community. They've inspired, mentored, and assisted the next wave of new industry professionals. They represent the type of graduates the school is most proud of, those that are passionate, creative, kind, committed, and highly resolved to make positive contributions to the world through their work. It's with pride and joy we shine a spotlight on these individuals. They are special. All right, let's cut back over to Tammy. This award ceremony marks the final event of our virtual Fame Week, which is a campus-wide celebration honoring the entertainment curriculum here at the Los Angeles Film School. This year, we transformed the week-long series into a virtual experience that celebrated our vibrant school culture in a safe way. It was truly an amazing time to be a part of our community.
to begin the most important part of our ceremony, it's time for you to meet our six Spotlight Academy inductees. Our first inductee of the evening is Damien Zybert, Animation Class of 2010. I grew up in Southern California. I've grown up around Hollywood. I've grown up around the film industry and art. I spent a lot of time at museums. I've had a passion with visual arts since I was a kid. I had some huge influences on my family, my grandmother mainly, who ran an art school when I was a child and I used to assist there. And I'd say that was probably my biggest influence growing up was, was that time I spent at her art school and assisting. It's where I started sculpting and painting. It really just became a part of my identity growing up. Over the years of practicing and practicing, I made a conscious decision to make a career out of it. I think the biggest lesson that I took away while being in the animation program at the film school was to make most of my time there and all the opportunities that were around me. I got a rare opportunity that really came to me uh, to work with Disney. I had spent a number of years teaching and working as a developer off and on with Pixelogic, doing freelance uh, artwork within the entertainment industry. And I got a phone call from a recruiter. They said, hey, do you wanna, do you wanna check this out at Disney? And I was like, heck yeah, I wanna check this out at Disney. I would love to work for Disney. And I went in nervous and with my, my best face on and put my best foot forward and kept my fingers crossed, waited for a bit, and then I got the call. And uh, when I got that call that I got the position at Disney, I celebrated. It didn't even hit me all at once. It was like a time-released experience that is still unfolding as I'm there. And I think it went back and pulled on my childhood heartstrings. And yeah, I mean, what can I say? I'm ecstatic to be at Disney. It's an amazing place to be. The people that I get to work with are phenomenal. What's not to love? I guess if I want to share some things about my process, the first important step for me is research. If I'm working on a ferry, I do a Google search, I go on Pinterest, and I'm, I'm flooding my, my brain with a virtual mood board. Hey, here's the things I like, and I start stripping things away, and I go, what's appropriate for the project? And I start stripping the things away that are, that are peripheral until I come into a focus. I'll start loosely sculpting, and then I start editing as I'm sculpting, and then it's a constant process of whittling away what's non-essential to what I want to express about the character that I'm working on. I can't say that any single character or figure that I've worked on is my favorite. I love all the characters that I've worked on. In every project that I work on, I, I try to bring a level of passion and personal interest in everything that I do. I'm always trying to find those aspects of a character that I love so that I can not just devote my time, but also devote my heart into that work so that it helps propel me towards the end of that project because as you travel along a project and the closer you get to completion, that last 10% is so hard to get through that if you don't do that, if you don't love everything that you're working on, I think that it's very difficult to, to really create something good. What I love most about being in the entertainment industry, it's the relationship with the audience and the, the ability to take part in storytelling with the audience. That sparks me. But I think more important is the collaboration with other artists. It's not just my voice that's going into a project. It's a multitude, it's a chorus of voices that are all working together towards a common goal. And everybody is, is sharpening each other's talents to produce the very best they can. The other beautiful thing about that collaboration is that it's not just your area of focus and your talent, but it's this spectrum of talents in various disciplines that you get to share in and where there's overlap. Um, and that's a really beautiful, that's a really beautiful thing about being in the entertainment industry. Having the honor of presenting Damien with his Spotlight Award is his mentor. LA Film School Program Director of Animation, Joffrey Black. My name is Joffrey Black. I'm Program Director for the Los Angeles Film School Animation and Visual Effects. And before I was an educator, I worked many years in the video game industry. And what I noticed at that time is what kind of work ethic it took 
to make it as a professional in these kind of industries. That kind of work ethic I saw uh, day one when I first met Damien, which is shortly after his graduation at the Los Angeles Film School. And the thing I knew about Damien, or the thing that surprised me about Damien was he was ready to go. He was ready to work in industry, I mean, at a, such a high level. Um, Damien would continue to work with us as an instructor, which I think was very valuable on my part because I was starting my career as an educator. And I learned so much from Damien as an educator. What Damien had the ability to do was to uh, passionately bring the best out of a student. He would find the best part of them and really focus in on that. He would push strong work ethics that built him and that were core to him. And we would instill that into his students and into his curriculum. I jokingly call what Damien does in the educational world, the uh, special forces of the art school. And so Damien's work ethic and his practice, he would work hours and hours and hours, day after day on his skill. And that's not something we find with even professionals out there um, too often. So when I heard Damien was going to work for Disney, I said it was well deserving of what Damien can do. And sure enough, uh, Disney um, Studios, they ended up getting such a talented, talented person. I think in the past three years, Damien has um, produced over 500 sculpts for Disney Studios or for Disney. And so if you've stepped into a Disney outlet store, you most likely have run across his sculpts and so forth. I've run across his, some of the projects that he's worked on. On top of that, I consider Damien to be one of my very best friends. He has been there for me when I definitely needed. He has uh, come back to our program so many times to help us, whether we're building out a 3D print program or I need a student that he could help mentor. Damien in his busy schedule and with his life, he has done so much for our school and very proud that he is the very first spotlight recipient for the animation and visual effects program and is well deserving. And I present to you, Damien Cyber. Thank you. While Damien could not be with us this evening, the Spotlight Academy Committee is proud to honor him for the substantial contributions he has made, both to our school and to the greater animation industry. Our next inductee of the evening is Enrique Andrade, Recording Arts Class of 2011. I was born in Manaus, the capital of the Amazon state, in the middle of the Amazon. Growing up was awesome. It was really fun. I grew up in a cool neighborhood. I had amazing friends. I had a great, great childhood. My parents had this insane passion for music. So to me, it was really, really cool being raised in a house that at least every weekend, we would have like music playing all the time. I remember an amazing like Beatles collection, Simon Garfunkel, The Carpenters, and things like that. Like very pop hippie kind of thing those were the things that were playing on my weekends at home i always wanted to live abroad so i started looking for schools outside brazil i found a la recording school at the time i was pretty happy knowing that i would be able to to be in the same room with people that had just worked on my favorite albums the teachers are are made out of professionals they're actually in touch with the industry so it's very relevant it's the value of sharing the experience of these teachers carry that is that is priceless for sure the moment i felt that i was in the right path was definitely when i got hired at record plant my first day at record plant my the day of my interview actually was it was insane on the first room was ll cool j across the room was snoop dogg down the hallway was will i am and at the end of the hallway was slash from guns and roses so that was mind-blowing my proudest accomplishment so far it, it's definitely the juanes album being involved on that album was something unique that i'm gonna definitely carry on my heart for a long, long time. His producers were 
phenomenal. We got to spend 10 days crafting this album that came out, out of this insane stressful moment. Literally like we were loading gear while I was preparing EQs and filters and assigning and making a list of the upboard gear that I wanted to, to be patched and all the, those things. It was definitely amazing to, to, to spend 10 days crafting an album that later will be mixed by Josh Goodwin in the same room that we recorded. Ended up winning two Grammys, one of them being the best engineered album. And that was something that, that was like, I was in awe, I was speechless. It was a, one crazy, crazy moment of my life. I think what I love the most in this industry, it's definitely people. I'm a very passionate person and I think I go to every project knowing the responsibility of what I'm doing as far as trying to translate and condense someone's idea, something that only existed in their head into something now that it's able to point and add it and touch and grab with the mouse at least. Every session and every project, you get to see someone new that it's completely in love with this idea, with this some, something that only exists on their brains, on their hearts. You gotta translate and enable them to get that out, to capture that and to help people to achieve those dreams, those moments of happiness where they're like, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Or that's how I heard in my head or something like that. This is, it's, it's black magic. It's super cool. Presenting Enhike's award this evening is former president of the record plant for over three decades, Rose Mancherny. Hello from Venice. I'm honored to be Enhike's mentor for the prestigious Spotlight Award. Thank you, LA Film School, for sending him to the record plant. During his interview with me, which by the way is not an easy one, I could tell he was the real deal he was passionate, hungry, and was determined to become a successful engineer and producer. He was an asset to the record plant, a team player, and he quickly became part of our family. When he wasn't running, he was in the studio twisting knobs. And when he wasn't twisting knobs, he was studying manuals. He worked his butt off, jumping in to help staff engineers with their teardowns after he had worked all night. He lived and breathed audio and it paid off. He started working with Justin Bieber, Fifth Dimension, John Bon Jovi, Zane, to name a few. He also won two Grammys for the Wands, one for Best Engineer. He's a joy to work with, a man of integrity, with a huge heart. He has golden ears and like his Grammy says, he's the best engineer. I'm so proud of you, Anike. Congratulations. Hi guys. Thanks for being here tonight, celebrating this incredible moment with us. It's an honor to be a part of this very select group of people among a lot of great people, great students that came across this school and are doing a great job. I. I have no words to say, to express my gratitude. Um, I don't think I really deserve, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep doing a great job to try to justify this prestige that you guys are giving to me right now. This is incredible. I'm really honored. Nothing would be possible without many families that I've ended up creating in this journey. The LA Recording School, the LA Film School, and to my record plant family, you guys definitely are the provider of all this. I couldn't have done it without it. And all the people that I've met in this world that had so much impact in my career, thank you so much. To my family, my dad, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, you guys are also in my heart. And every time, I get a moment to celebrate something like this. It's, it's because of all your love and all support. Like, it wouldn't be, 
wouldn't be possible. So thank you again. This is incredible. I, I'll try to just fight even more. And my mom said success is not a, the destination. It's a journey. And thank you guys so much for making such a fun journey. This is awesome. Thanks. Okay, let's check in with Joe. Joe, I, I don't think that's going to work. Joe, can, can you hear me? <laughs> All right, we'll check in with Joe later. Now back to our inductees. Our next inductee of the evening is Jessica Sterling, film class of 2001. I grew up in Florida. My mom's a graphic designer, so I spent my growing up being exposed to the arts and visual images. And when I was a teenager, I got interested in photography. My dad got me a darkroom set up and an enlarger. So I spent a lot of time in the magic of the darkroom watching things emerge. You know, one of the big takeaways from going to the LA Film School for me was the hands-on aspect of the school, how you can get your hands on equipment right away. You don't have to wait until you're a junior or senior. Lots of great teachers who you could just ask all your dumb questions to and they, they're there and they'll answer them. It's like having a, you know, like an encyclopedia of great people to talk to at your fingertips and they're just available. While I was in school, I started working in an internship in a production company. One of my instructors mentioned that there was going to be an internship and would I be interested and I said absolutely. So I was working there and while I was there I met the head of the company and he ended up needing an assistant. So because I'm really organized I thought that I was going to probably get into producing. So that's the kind of the direction I was headed um, toward the end of my uh, graduating you know, kind of time. So I think a month before I graduated, I got a job as this producer's assistant for the head of this production company. I really didn't realize it at the time, but I, <laughs> I, I didn't really want to be a film producer at that time. And I didn't recognize that at first. So when a friend of mine who's a photographer, a uh, very successful portrait photographer in Hollywood asked me if I wanted to help run his studio for him, I was like, um, okay, let's give it a shot. And it was great for me to learn um, about the business of photography, the business working with clients, writing contracts, dealing with people, and then all the technical technical stuff. Um, how to, you know, when you, when you work with somebody who really knows, rather than having to learn everything on your own, you kind of jump ahead by leaps and bounds because all of a sudden you just kind of get the best practices, the best way to do things. I actually didn't realize that photography would be something that would suit me so well and that I would love so much. There's the technical aspect of it, the gear and, and putting things together and figuring things out, and I love that. And then there's the visual creative aspect, which of course I love. And then there's dealing and working with people, working with clients and being around people and, and helping tell uh, stories. My very first break as a freelance photographer was I got to photograph this big award ceremony for the Visual Effects Society and they're uh, honoring different people in the uh, entertainment industry and the main honoree that year happened to be Steven Spielberg. So having somebody of his caliber in my portfolio, we photographed him at that event, getting his award, and I happened to get a really great shot of him looking right at the camera. I didn't yell or anything, I just waited until he was ready and he looked right at me and I just took the picture. Um, and that shot, helped me kind of parlay it and roll it into positioning me as a photographer who was, who was cool. I try to keep my business moving. I try to keep it evolving. And for me, as a working photographer, my job is to find out what my clients need and want and to help them get it, help them express their vision. Uh, and then when I do personal work, that's my you know, sandbox and my playtime. And sometimes that personal work is so awesome that my clients see it and they go, oh, I want it to look like that, you know? <laughs> Which is a cool way to kind of feed, feed itself. One of the things I'm proudest about is having repeat clients. There's, to me, is nothing more satisfying than having somebody who really just wants you back again and again. It, it's like you're building actual friendships. I guess what really drives me is I love that human connection. I love learning about people and what's important to them and what they love. And when, as a photographer, you know, I'm, I'm right there with them. So I get to kind of 
sometimes I'm the only person there who isn't really part of their club, you know? So I get to kind of learn learn about what, what's going on in their world. That to me is, uh, I love it. Jessica's award will be presented by her mentor, attorney and professor Judith Marians. Hello, I'm Judith Marians. I was an entertainment lawyer and a film executive for many years. And all during that time, I taught at various film schools in the U.S. and in Europe. Jessica was my student at the L.A. Film School, and that's where I met her. Shortly into the semester, I knew she was going to succeed. She asked really bright questions. She persevered. She stayed with the subject until she understood it. I congratulate the LA Film School for choosing Jessica Sterling as the recipient of this award. She has taken on and succeeded in a tremendous challenge of becoming a sole entrepreneur and doing everything in her business on her own. In addition, she's a married woman with a child, so her world is very challenging and she's met that challenge magnificently. I've been her mentor for years, but she doesn't need a mentor anymore. We have a treasured friendship and I am so pleased to see her honored in this way. So congratulations to Jessica Sterling, truly deserving of this award and congratulations to the LA Film School for recognizing this outstanding woman. This is overwhelming to be welcome back to the school like this. It's, it's like getting a big hug. Um, I'm just humbled to be recognizing the same group with these professionals. Going to the LA Film School jump-started my creative life and it gave me the skills and the confidence to go out and face the world as a working artist. I'm, uh, I'm just stunned at how amazing uh, the school has it's grown and become so mature and just really become a force that, uh, you know, is always a, a candy store uh, for resources. And now it's just like Disneyland. <laughs> so I, I just want to thank... Um, the teachers and the staff at the school and Joe Byron and my mentor Judith Marians and my parents, Mick and Betsy Sterling for their guidance and support. This is really an honor. Thank you. This is so good, so good. One of my absolute favorite parts of my job here at working at the school is alongside our employees on behalf of and in service to our students and alumni. I believe in the strength of the collective, and it's only fitting to take a minute to show some love to the three vital parts of the LA Film School community, to our faculty and staff and educational partners. Against all odds this year, your devotion to delivering an interactive, creative, and collaborative educational model and consistently, without fail, Maintaining connection and support to each of our students is humbling and inspiring. Thank you. Additionally, we must also extend our gratitude to those that have made tonight possible. Our sponsors, Roland, Sony, Quasar Science, Red and Mosis. Your partnership directly enhances and supports our educational model, which in turn supports our students and their creative aspirations. Thank you again. And last but certainly not least, a sincere heartfelt thank you to our co-chairmen, Bill Hebner, Ed Haddock, and John Phelps. Thank you for your continued faith in us and the support of our students' dreams. And now we haven't heard from Joe in a while. Joe, are you there? I'm good. Hi folks, I'm still here and I'm almost home. I can't tell you enough how much I've been enjoying the show. How are y'all liking it so far? Let us know in the comments. Oh, that's not good. Uh, uh, don't worry about me. Now, let's get back to the inductees. It is an honor to introduce our next inductee, Martin Penza, Film Class of 2002. I was born in France, but I came to Canada, Montreal, Canada, when I was uh, six years old. I was very much into visual art when I was young. My dad was a, a post-production supervisor, but he was always very much into tech. 
And for some reason, like he had a, you know, a big VHS camera and he had the tape to tape. In elementary school with some friends, we were allowed to, instead of making an oral presentation of something, we were allowed to make a movie. And we were like the only kids who were able to make movies at that time. It never occurred to me that this was something interesting or that film was something interesting. I was consuming films like anyone else. I loved movies. So as soon as I knew I wanted to, to make movies, I started shopping around for different schools. My aunt, Danielle Suisa, was uh, the dean of the LA Film School at the time. She said, like, if you're shopping around, just shop around here. You know, I looked at the program, she talked about it, and I was like, yeah, why not? That sounds great. You know, like, I'm going to the mecca of filmmaking? Like, sure. What I learned from my experience at the LA Film School was that it's it's so important to try every role on a set, in post-production, in pre-production, to understand the, the role and the craft of everyone. And if you do it yourself, you'll get to know it better. You'll know how to talk to these people later on if you become a director or, you know, or a DP or whoever you want to become later on. And that's the opportunity that the LA Film School gave me. I think my proudest accomplishment is would have to be Dallas Buyers Club. I was ready to co-edit with John Mark. I was I felt so lucky to have that experience, to have that uh, opportunity, and I loved the script. And I knew we had something very special, so I I gave everything I had. That really jump started the rest of my career. Not just because again we were nominated, but but just for the way we worked, John Mark and I and. Uh, how we told that story, it set the bar for the rest of, of what I was going to do later on. When I was working on Wild, uh, I was again editing from home in Montreal in my basement. I didn't even think about the Oscars at all. Like to me, I was in the thick of it. The morning of the nominations, my mom calls me and it's like, it's incredible. I just saw on the news, you Dallas Buyers Club was nominated for uh, your best this and this and this and that. And I'm like really happy for everyone on the on the team. Uh, so I wanted to congratulate John Mark about everything that him and his team had done. And so I call him. I hear that he's waking up and I'm like, oh, did I wake you up? You're usually, you know, awake much earlier than that. He's like, yeah, I'd, I didn't sleep well. I'm like, well, I don't know if you know, but we were nominated for this and this and that. And he's like, oh, wait a second. I got tons of emails and texts and what, what's, yeah. And we're, we were nominated for editing too. He's, I'm like, what? No. He's like, yeah, yeah, we've, we've been, nominated for editing. I'm like, oh, so I was so happy. At that point, he's like, but don't get distracted. You know, we need to finish this movie and uh, you're gonna get a lot of phone calls and let's get back to work. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, I enjoyed it, but I didn't have much time to enjoy it at the time until, I, until we came for the, for the actual Oscars. What I love the most about working in this business is probably to be able to be a part of the world's imagination, you know, of people watching a movie and sort of be responsible for their feelings at that time. And, you know, it's something I, I take a, a great deal of, of passion and I try to work on the most when I'm working on a cut is to make sure that it's targeting you know, as many people as possible and to get a specific reaction. It's an amazing feeling to know that they're laughing at the right place, that they're crying at the right place. And sometimes they surprise you too. You know, you're like, you did something that, ah, oh, I don't think they're going to react to it, but that's how I feel. And they react to it. And it's a, it's really a strong uh, feeling. Having the honor of presenting Martin with his award, we have his mentor, director and cinematographer, Erickson Kaur. Hello, I'm Eric Sincor, and I'm so grateful to have a chance to praise Martin a little bit as he receives the Los Angeles Film School Spotlight Award. I was always moved by Martin's work uh, in films that he's edited, such as Dallas Buyers Club, which he was nominated for an Academy Award for, and also for his work on Wild. I thought they were just beautifully, beautifully done. Um, Martin and I collaborated on a film called Togo that we finished last year. Um, and our early work on that film together was really about going through the script and focusing on that and looking at the characters, sort of outlining the arc of the character and how we wanted to uh, make the film together. 
And during that process, I was able to realize what an absolute beautiful person Martin is, just an old soul with great emotional depth. And I knew that we were gonna have a great journey together on the project. When we were shooting the film, uh, we actually worked remotely from each other. I was up in the Canadian Rockies in very remote locations, which made it very difficult for me to get a hold of Martin. So Martin was working in Los Angeles with his team of editors and assistants, and that ultimately turned out to be uh, kind of an interesting leap of faith. Um, I had to trust that Martin was going to find the film and the immense amount of footage that I was uh, sending him and would be able to be an objective and clear opinion of all of it, which was kind of wonderful. And I kind of knew instinctually from my conversations and early work with Martin that uh, we were making the same film. Um, however, when I finally got to the editing room and uh, Martin was ready to show me his first cut, um, was probably the greatest moment of joy that I had on the entire film. Uh, Martin was able to embody the heart of the story while being emotionally grounded. The film was incredibly paced and exquisitely structured. And that was his first cut, which most of it is still absolutely there to the very finished product of the film. Um, I thought it was just absolutely all there and um, I could not have hoped for more, which was fantastic. Um, it was such additive work, which Martin does so well, but Honestly, I was more impressed with what followed that, which was when we were collaborating together on the edit and refining and amplifying things, um, Martin really had a very subtractive process, um, like a sculptor taking away unnecessary material. Always, he always, always asked the question, what can we remove from the film? He cut it to a sleek, uh, limited bit. Uh, if I ever wanted a little bit more, um, if it was too much, Martin knew it and he just took it out of it. So he was completely committed to making an emotionally deep film, but he was fiercely eradicating sentimentality wherever he could, which I deeply appreciated. Uh, it was a great gift to witness Martin's work and also to reap the benefits of it. Um, I should mention during this entire process, about halfway through the edit, uh, Martin and Daphne welcomed their beautiful baby daughter, Jackie, to the world and um, to their lives. And um, as you may know, filmmaking is uh, known to be a bit of an emotional roller coaster, and sleep deprivation is just the way it is. It's part of it. Um, but it's nothing in comparison to being a brand new parent of a little baby. And Martin uh, was in the middle of that uh, for the rest of the process of making the film. And what was extraordinary to me is even in that process, Martin was able to give so much of himself to Togo and had so much focus on it, which was a bit of a miracle um, in the middle of also um, raising his young daughter. Um, so with that being said, it's just more evidence to me of Martin's ability to be a beautifully open-hearted person. Um, a beautiful father, husband, partner, and filmmaker. And Martin, uh, to you personally, I am so happy you're getting this award, but it's so well-deserved. Um, the honor from the Los Angeles Film School is just one of those things that is more evidence of how amazing you are as a person and how grateful I am to have seen your superb work on Togo your creative partnership, and more than anything, to be your friend. So congratulations and bravo, Martin. Thank you so much, LA Film School, for this award, uh, which uh, in a way I feel it's a bit premature in my career. I don't feel that old, but uh, the school seems to be quite young as well. And me being one of their first students, uh, I guess it sort of makes sense. But thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. I'm very honored. Um, obviously, I want to thank um, all the teachers I had back then, um, especially uh, my aunt, uh, Danielle Suisa, uh, who was our directing, acting teacher, um, taught me so much. And she, you know, she was gracious enough to, to uh, give me a home and everything while I was there. So thank you so much. Um, Joe Byron, um, not only was he a great cinematography teacher back then, but he was always a mentor to all of us. Every time I came back to LA, he was the first one I called. And even today, we still talk uh, very often. And uh, 
So thank you so much, my friend. Uh, I also want to thank uh, all the teachers I had in the past, but especially uh, my very first teacher, film teacher back in Montreal at uh, Collège Brébeuf, uh, Monsieur Berube, who was uh, really an inspiration. He gave me the bug. Uh, you know, he made me realize that filmmaking was everything that I actually loved. You know, I used to do theater and music and photography, so it makes sense to combine all of this and you know and, and tell uh, compelling stories. And you know, I. He really, truly gave me uh, the inspiration, the passion there. Um, I also want to thank, you know, everyone who gave me an opportunity. And this is this is big. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are very extremely passionate and very talented who, who needs that chance and, and never gets it. Uh, I was so fortunate and lucky to have that, um, starting with Jean-Marc Vallée, who gave me my first editing. Uh, feature uh, editing job on uh, Dallas Buyers Club and obviously that changed my life so I'm truly truly grateful and he taught me so much. I learned so much with all of the filmmakers I work with from Angelina Jolie to Tyler McIntyre, Sasha Gervasi, Julia Hart, uh, Sam Taylor Johnson and uh, last but not least Erickson Kaur who, who I met two years ago uh, when we were doing Togo together. And, you know, not only did he teach me so much about, he gave me a new perspective on storytelling and filmmaking, but also on leadership and friendship and uh, finally on parenthood. You know, I was, uh, we were lucky, my wife and I, and I, to have a beautiful baby during the production. And he made it so smooth for us to, to go through that transition and, uh, you know, take the time and appreciate that magical moment we were going through while still making a beautiful film. Um, you know, he's, I was, um, I'm, I'm very fortunate in my life and very lucky right now to be able to choose my project and, you know, to, to, to find the projects that means something to me and hopefully that can have an impact. So hopefully I keep doing that. Um, so yes, thank you to all of you. Thank you to my wife who sacrificed a lot in my career. Uh, for me to be able to do it, to, to go through my passion. And so, you know, this one is for you as well. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Up next, we have Oz Rodriguez, film class of 2003. I was born in Cuba, in La Habana, Cuba. My mom, my dad and I, we left when I was four months old. Went to the Dominican Republic and that's where I grew up. My mom has always been an avid movie watcher and would always go to the theater in Cuba to watch movies and I think from her I took this love of watching movies. So I think that's when I started being really into filmmaking and movies. You know, here and there they'd show like the behind the scenes on how something would get made and like I remember like Temple of Doom when they would show like behind the scenes. So this first moments we identify what a director does or like how fun it is to be on set and create those stories. I found an article that mentioned the LA Film School. I started researching a little bit more and honestly what was interesting to me was the fact that it was a one year program. That was my favorite thing because I just done three and a half years of advertising and you know I was like oh my life is over I can't just do four years of film school now. Like, so the fact that it was a one year school was appealing. My favorite thing about LA Film School was that they gave us a camera the first day and we had to do a short by the end of the week. It's very daunting to just try and go do something, but that energy of like, here's a camera, go do it. We have a we have a thing by Friday. It was really exciting and, and, and empowering and I still think about it to this day and, and when I give advice, it's usually something like, just start doing some stuff on your phone, just try experimenting, because that's how you learn. Sketch comedy for me has been great and has changed my life, but it's something I kind of just stumbled into it. I didn't go to film school thinking I'm going to end up directing a lot of comedy or sketch comedy or be at SNL. Like I've been asked, like, was it your dream to be at SNL? And I didn't even know that that was a dream that was possible. So <laughs> I say not really. In my time at SNL, one of my favorite things about it was coming to work and, and just being surrounded by all these amazing talented people, all these artisans, all these like masters of their craft. I was so excited to like work with all these amazing people and I sort of wanted to share how amazing these people are because 
when you see an SNL documentary, it's usually about the history, Lorne Michaels, the first five years, the celebrity host, and maybe at most you'll get a sense of the writing. That's maybe at mo the most behind the scenes that you get. But I feel like there's so much more artistry that happens there. Uh, and I just wanted to share that. So we made this series called Creating SNL. I was a director producer and we got nominated for an Emmy three years in a row. And the third time was a charm. We ended up uh, winning an Emmy. I think SNL is a huge achievement for me and I think one of the big reasons why is it's such a huge worldwide institution and it's pretty cool to tell your parents that you have moved on to this uh, program that they know from the Dominican Republic and they know if it's important. Another thing I'm, I'm proud of uh, now is I've just recently started writing and developing. It was the first time I started doing stuff in my voice fully. I have a movie coming out in October called Vampires vs. the Bronx that I uh, wrote and directed. It was inspired from my childhood watching movies like The Goonies and The Lost Boys and watching these American kids fight these, you know, heightened monsters. I just want to do a version like that, but with kids that look like me and my friends growing up. So if I would love to tell more stories like that where people like me and my friends that look like us could be the leads in that story. I think the art of filmmaking is still super exciting to me to, to practice it and to watch it and to learn about it. It's such an amazing experience to like work with so many talented people that are all there on a set, for example, for the same goal to just produce some quality content. The connection you make, obviously with the actors, but the crew and everything. and. Um, at first it was a little scary for me because you have to get out of your shell and you have to, you're forced to talk to people. Everybody has a million questions, so you can't like hide and be shy. Uh, and it can be daunting at first, but I learned to just enjoy, enjoy it and enjoy working with so many talented people. It is with great honor and distinction that we introduce Oz's mentor, director of photography, Kevin Atkinson. Hi, I'm here to present Osmani Rodriguez with the Los Angeles Film School Spotlight Award. I came to know Osmani when we worked together in the equipment room at the Los Angeles Film School. His best friend Matt had pestered me nonstop for a week to hire Oz, so I did. I had no choice. Matt and Oz were the best of friends, and soon we three became the best of friends. Osmani and Matt found fast success in making sketch comedy for SuperDeluxe.com. They were quickly recruited to direct for Funny or Die, and they would often call on me to shoot for them. It was an awesome time. Funny or Die was in its early days of live-action comedic shorts, and they would cast A-list actors in very silly and creative scripts. In 2010, Osmani and Matt invited me to shoot a spoof called Peace on Earth, Little Drummer Boy, with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley playing David Bowie and Bing Crosby from a 1977 televised special. Bridges on Bridges with Bo Bridges is exactly that. Bo Bridges standing on bridges talking about bridges. The Wire the Musical was the cast of The Wire promoting the musical. In 2012, Matt and Oz were recruited again, this time to Saturday Night Live where they thrived in their craft. Their work was often absurd but always funny with hits like Sad Mouse, Do It In My Twin Bed, Grow Guy, Prom Queen, and Monster Pals. They even spoofed Jay-Z's rise to fame with the Jay-Z story. In 2016, Matt passed away from cancer. It was devastating. I draw comfort from the fact that his work lives on. Osmani continued their shared dream of directing excellent comedy. Oz and his team won a primetime Emmy with his series Creating Saturday Night Live, and he recently directed his second feature, Vampires vs. the Bronx. And if you happen to be within a circle of trust, you get emailed a link each year of an invariably sweet and silly Christmas video that he shoots with his parents in the Dominican Republic. It has become a part of Christmas for me and reminds me every year of Oz's endless passion for filmmaking. After having worked with many directors, I appreciate how Osmani cultivates a relaxed, fun, and creative set. The deadlines are real and the stakes are high, but Oz doesn't lose his cool. He is open to suggestion and he always pursues excellence. I am thrilled that my friend Osmani is being awarded this recognition. He deserves it. His kindness, creativity, and talent has always been welcome on any given set. Congratulations, Oz. Okay, uh, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this incredible recognition. Um, I am deeply honored. Um, this means so much to me uh, because the LA Film School changed my life. Um, 
when I moved from the Dominican Republic to Los Angeles, I didn't know a single person. And I went and uh, found a home at LAFS and met some people that became uh, lifelong friends. Um, I worked in the equipment room. Uh, I even taught a class at LA Film School. So uh, I will be forever grateful for the ways that shaped my, uh, my filmmaking career. Um, thank you, Joe Byron. Um, Filmmaking is a very challenging craft uh, and no one gives uh, better positive encouragement than Joe Byron. Um, thank you, Kevin Atkinson. Uh, started as a teacher and then you were our boss at the equipment room and then we started working together and we were uh, collaborators. Uh, I've always uh, enjoyed your perfect tan, your chill vibes and your many, many lessons. Um, and uh, thank you, Steve Cook, for all your editing knowledge. And I also want to thank all the teachers and the students I uh, spent time with at the LA Film School. I think every one of you um, sort of shaped my career in some way. And also uh, thanks to Matt Velines, who uh, our friendship started at LA Film School and continued as we were employees in the equipment room and then teachers. And uh, we always uh, held a special place in our heart for LA Film School. Um, so yeah, I, when I think of LA Film School, I always think of Matt. So uh, uh, I miss him and I uh, love him. And thank you so much for this. <laughs> I don't know if I can go on. There's still one inductee left. Now hurry home, Joe. You're right. I'm on my way. So much to do. Gotta clean out the living room, set up the green screen. Spotlight, here I come. Hey, Tammy, I made it. Safe, sound, and healthy. I told you I wouldn't let you down, and I didn't. Let's go on with the show. Let's close the show with our last inductee. This is our sixth and final inductee, and it's a very special award because it's being presented posthumously. I knew Matt since the first day at the Los Angeles Film School. I was a teacher, I was his teacher, I was a critic. I was a tough critic. I was an advocate. I became his boss. I've always felt that I was his friend. And as he went off into this crazy business, I became one of his biggest fans. It is now my intense honor and pleasure to introduce our next Spotlight inductee. Please help us celebrate film alumnus, class of 2003, director and producer, Matt Valines. For our posthumous inductee of the evening, we are honored to introduce Matt Valines, film class of 2003. Matt grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He started watching Die Hard a lot, which I really relate to, and action movies and Jackie Chan movies. I think when he was a teenager, he started experimenting with making little shorts in his backyard. He ended up going to OU, University of Oklahoma, to do English, I believe, which I related to because I, we sort of both went to college to do a thing that we kind of really didn't want to do, but we felt like we needed to go to school to do something. And then he, kind of like me, decided like, well, you know, we gotta, let's, let's try it. I'm gonna go for this dream and move to LA and go to this LA film school. We always had a fond, fondness for, for the film school and what we learned and how much you guys allowed us to also experiment and just grow as filmmakers. Matt was my student. He and Oz were in my screenwriting class, uh, busily writing 
projects that they were going to film. And the thing that I remember about those films is that they were these shorts. They were shorts. They got it. They were shorts. It was the best thing to do with a short film is not to try to make a 20 minute version of Gone with the Wind. You know, you want to make a, a three to five minute movie. And if you make a three to five minute movie, I believe you can get almost anybody in Hollywood to take a look at it. And especially if it's funny. But I remember he was just always a genuinely like a good person. Like he always made me feel comfortable. Uh, whenever we see each other in the hallways, we sort of greet each other and make a couple jokes. And uh, we kind of had a shtick where I kind of played the incessantly positive, annoying guy. And he was kind of the straight laced straight guy. And um, we had little bits that we would do. He was just a, he was just a funny guy. Straight out of film school, I shot a series of short films for him and uh, his group, Honor Student, uh, with Osmani and David Neer. And uh, they were absolutely ridiculous and brilliant at the same time. And uh, he was the, the motor that, you know, got us to get those things done. And, and it set the stage for all the projects we were able to do after that. As a director, he was able to make people feel like they were in good hands, and they were, because he was a very competent and talented dude. We hit it off as friends, and we both had this ambition to uh, make something. And he, he was serious about it, you know? Not just talk, like, let's do it, let's make something. And so he had the will to direct, he and Oz, and the equipment, from the equipment room, and I had uh, a couple of ideas. So we teamed up and we made a 12 minute comedy sketch. <laughs> the day of the shoot, one of the actors didn't show up, so Matt had to step in. Matt's comedy is like, he was making internet memes before internet memes were really a thing. What he had done going from the LA Film School to Funny or Die and SNL, is super impressive, but if you knew Matt, not that impressive because you knew he was, he was destined for great things. One of my funniest memories about Matt actually was um, one day when he had me go into the ADR booth um, to record some voiceover for one of the com one of the videos that they were putting together, and he made me say "Big Rainbow" approximately 100 times into a microphone for probably something that nobody saw ever but his perfectionism and his sense of like, just joy in the ridiculousness of something like that um, is something really funny that I'll always remember about him. Matt loved making movies and he loved having friends that, that wanted to make movies. And my memory of Matt is how much he loved his friends and how much he supported us and how much fun we all had together doing what we loved. I owe my career and a lot of people owe their career to Matt, so Matt, I wish you were here so I can thank you, um, but I know uh, you're proud of me. I will always look up to you uh, as like the guide to what I want to be uh, when, when I grow up. So thank you for that. And uh, you know, I hope, I hope I've been able to make you proud. He's, uh, you know, a big part of this business and he's touched a lot of people in this business. And um, he certainly has uh, touched my life and helped my career. And, um, give me a great example of how to be as an artist, as a human being, uh, as, a, as a filmmaker, and I'll always be grateful to Matt. The stuff that I learned from you, I'm still trying to do. I'm still trying to, to, to kind of, you know, live up to the kind of example that you set for me, and, and I hope I'm doing okay. And, uh, and boy, I was lucky to, to know you, and I know a lot of people feel the same way. Our paths started together, and we both helped each other. And going into this crazy industry, I, I went in with uh, a partner with Matt, so uh, that's, that's my origin story. So I don't even know what it would be without Matt. Here to accept the award for Matt are members of his family, Diane, Elton, and Linda Velines. We are honored to accept this award for our son, Matthew. We were a movie-going family. At a very young age, Matt knew he wanted to make films. After receiving a degree in film from a traditional university, he immediately moved to Los Angeles. It quickly became apparent that his film degree was, in his words, worthless in helping him find an industry job. 
He found the Los Angeles Film School, enrolled, met our dear friend Oz Rodriguez, and followed his dream until the day he died. Thank you so much for this award. It is uh, truly an honor to accept this on, on Matt's behalf. I know that he would have been incredibly thrilled uh, to be recognized from the LA Film School. It was the beginning of a tremendous career. He met many of his best friends there, obviously, Oz, his longtime directing partner. And it was really the start of his professional endeavor into a very difficult business. Um, but I think the school taught him not only how to be a good director, but to be a good business person and, and to be an outstanding human being. Um, so thank you again. And I know Matt is smiling really big. Damien, Enrique, Jessica, Martin, Oz, and including Matt's loved ones. Sometimes we wish we could see our future. We wonder if our dream is possible. Tonight, it is through your stories, experiences, and journeys that you have shown hundreds of people from all walks of life that the future is possible and it is bright. It is through your eyes that we can see our own tomorrows. Thank you for sharing so much of you with all of us, the countless ways that you give back to our students, the help that you afford a fellow alumnus, the creative change that you are making in our world and for being part of our Los Angeles Film School family. We are so proud of you and we are grateful for you. What a wonderful ceremony, but the fun's not over yet. We'll be having a virtual after party on our Twitch page with LA Recording School graduate, DJ Lid. Everyone come join the fun, we'll see you there. I'm so excited about this ceremony and I'm so excited about it next year. So until next time folks, stay safe and always be creative. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in celebrating our 2020 Spotlight Academy class. This now concludes our event. Have a wonderful evening.